With video games and 3D cinematics, sometimes we need to apply motion to characters to tell their story. This can take various shapes and forms depending on the art medium and style. For instance, expressive mediums like anime can make use of keyframes to manually manipulate a character into expressive motions. Whereas to achieve a realistic representation of real motion, various technologies are required. Let's take my current short film currently being developed as an example. It requires a host of bespoke animations to be completed where the character animations must mimic the real world. But how do we achieve this in a cost-effective manner? A simple solution would be to video record all of your motions and layer on top of your animations by placing strategic keyframes. However, this is often a laborious process that requires hours of work and a keen eye for animation. Not to mention, if adjustments need to be made, this entire process must be started from the beginning. If we take a step back and consider the building blocks of a 3D character, we will understand that our character is represented by two separate parts. The mesh which defines the character's appearance and a set of bones used to animate it. Each bone manipulates a separate part of the mesh, allowing us to bring life to our character. With a simple rig, we can begin to build layers that allows us to manipulate our mesh in a more efficient manner. Two layers include FK and IK constraints. FK, short for forward kinematics, refers to a technique where the motion of an object or character's limbs is determined by the rotation of its parent joints. This means that when one joint moves, it affects the position or orientation of the joints connected to it. IK, short for inverse kinematics, refers to a technique where the position and orientation of an object or character's limb are determined by the desired location of its end effector or end point. The primary advantage of IK is its ability to simplify the animation process, particularly for complex interactions and movements. For example, when animating a character reaching for an object, IK allows the animator to directly control the position of the character's hand and the system automatically adjusts the rotations of the shoulder, elbow and wrist joints to create a natural arm movement. If we apply these tools to our 3D model and input motion capture data, we can efficiently create bespoke animations that can be cleaned and sent to the production floor. Motion capture allows animators to create to capture realistic movements that would not be achievable through the use of keyframing. Consider the slight shifts in momentum and twitches that the human body acts out when performing tasks. Motion capture encapsulates all that data and applies it to a 3D skeleton. Now that you know the concept, let's see how we can create 3D animations. Using Rococo, we can capture our real life motion data using the video recording feature. You can use a suit if you have one available. Well, this allows us to upload a video and extract the motion data via the downloader. We then need to map that motion data to a separate 3D rig, in this case, a simple Mixmo T-Pose. The Mixmo IK rig is unable to copy motion data from the Rococo rig. However, we can copy the animation data from the Mixmo T-Pose to the Mixmo IK rig. Lastly, we can clean our data within Blender before exporting to the Unreal 5 engine. I should leave a note and say we will be using Blender add-ons to achieve this, and I will link all of them below. I started the process by importing a video file into Rococo to be analyzed using AI. Using AI, it creates motion data based on the video, and I found that wearing black produced poor results, and that by experimenting with various angles of recording, I was able to achieve better animation data. With the animation data recorded, I exported that as an FBX file with the Mixmo preset enabled. Here, Mixmo rigs your characters and provides a very simple rig. Using a T-Pose provided the best results, and I exported one with a 3D mesh included and one without the 3D mesh. I'll explain this in a second. With the Blender add-ons downloaded and installed, and all three models imported, I began retargeting and cleaning my animation data. The Rococo retargeting add-on allows you to match the bones to the Mixmo T-Pose. Just make sure you don't have any duplicate bones. After the retargeting was complete, the simple Mixmo rig has successfully copied the motion data from Rococo. As discussed at the start of the video, IK allows for more control over your 3D rig. By applying the Mixmo IK rig via the add-on provided by Mixmo, I can now copy the animation data from the Mixmo T-Pose and begin to clean my animations. All that's left to do is export the mesh and skeleton as an FBX file, import that into Unreal, place the character into the sequencer, select your animation and start filming. All in all, I think this is a good workflow for getting results very, very fast. 
I want to say a big thank you to all my Patreons. And of course, thank you very much for watching. And I shall see you next time.